Hello. Give me one second. I am trying to go live. Hello. Give me one second. I am trying to go live on Instagram right now too, so I can do two lives at once, but it's giving me a little bit of a technical difficulty. I hope you guys are doing great. I am having an awesome Wednesday. Okay, let's see if we got this. Okay, it looks like it's starting to work right now. Okay, I'm live on both Instagram and Facebook, so that way I can reach more people with these questions. I'm actually thinking about changing my Facebook Lives to, I think, Sunday at 7 p.m., if you want to comment when is the best time for you to be live because i really would love for you guys to be here live with me i want as many people as possible because i answer prepared questions here but i also um, am able to answer whatever questions you have so if you're watching i'm doing both facebook and instagram so that's why my my um head might be turning a little bit okay so today's question is about, um, is loving animals enough for a career in wildlife biology? And this is actually a really great question because I went into this career mostly for my love of animals. That's, that's the main factor that drove me into this career. And if you looked at my colleagues in graduate school, a lot of them actually were driven by science. Like some people, they, they didn't really care about what animals they studied. They just wanted to like investigate these different scientific questions. So my answer is going to be both yes and no. And let me explain. So if you really want to go into a career in wildlife biology and wildlife biology, biology is the study of things. So that is science. You will absolutely have to do science, which involves math and which involves writing. And I think that people get this idea from school that science is really about memorizing different things. Um, we're taught in biology class to memorize um, different taxons. Um, we're taught like, you know, memorizing the structure of the cell and differences between plant and animal cell and all that jazz. But as a scientist, you are figuring out questions to things that nobody has the answer to. So you are collecting data, you are analyzing data, and you are writing up your results. So if you do not like analyzing data, if you do not like math, then you should not go into this career because you won't be happy. Um, some people, and, and the, the industry is changing a lot too, so you're spending less and less time outside. Um, I talk about this in my, in my Tech for Wildlife video, how technology is changing wildlife. So we have a lot more sensors, like camera traps, we have GPS tracking devices, and those um, mean that scientists don't need to go into the field as often. So if you guys are just joining, feel free to ask any questions, say hi. So, um, so back to the question. So you are going to be spending more and more time indoors, therefore doing things like data analysis and less time outdoors. And if you think about, um, I think when people think of wildlife biologists, they think of like Jane Goodall. This is what I always thought of. I always thought of her. And you imagine her or Diane Fossey out there studying the chimpanzees and the gorillas. And the majority of their time was in the field. But you don't see video footage of them going back into the lab and writing up their dissertations, writing up their papers, and that actually is a big part of it. But again, as mentioned, the technology has increased so much. We have so much more data. So really, there's a heavy emphasis on data analysis. So again, this is if you want to go into a straight wildlife biology scientific career. That being said, you can absolutely go into a wildlife career or even a career a little bit tangential to wildlife that um, doesn't involve math or science if you, if you don't like those areas. Um, 
or if you are like me, I tend to like more outreach and communication. So I did, I did go through being a scientist and I did science for many years, but I do have to say like data analysis was not one of my favorite parts. And as I mentioned in the beginning, that my love for animals um, overtook that. So that's why I became a scientist. So, okay, so, so I said yes and no. So you might not be happy if you only are doing it for animals and you go into this career because um, you love animals, and you don't love science and writing and math and stuff. But um, I should say that if you really love animals, you're really fascinated by them, your love for them can override this. Um, and that's kind of like what happened to me. Although I do love writing, but um, the analysis part was not my favorite part. So um, ultimately, it's up to you, and you're going to have to. I would, or I would recommend that you get some volunteering experience to see if research is really what you like. And you can do that by reaching out to a professor if you're at a college, and asking if you can volunteer in their lab. You can get college credit for it. You might be able to get paid for it if you have a work study program at your university. Okay. Now, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> now back to what I was saying about the no side. So um, you might hate math so much or hate statistics or hate reading scientific papers so much that you don't want to go into wildlife biology. But there are many, many careers that you can get that help wildlife um, directly and indirectly. And these are the careers that people don't think about. So for example, I, I like to use this example a lot. Money is so important in wildlife research and conservation. We are always looking for money because we cannot do our research without money. One tracking device can cost thousands of dollars. Um, so if you need a sample size of at least 10 and you need to anesthetize the animals, you need to pay for veterinarians, you need, um, oh cool, someone's listening from a bear den, wow. I hope the bears are learning a lot. <laughs> Um, you, you need to pay for the trackers, you need to pay for the vet, so all that stuff adds up. My, my genetic study and field work cost, I think, a total of like $40,000 in graduate school. And we can't afford that, so we ask for grants, and the grants, um, therefore, pay for our research. And um, in order for us to get those grants, um, it takes time. And if you are really great at fundraising, at bringing people together, that is a job where you can directly benefit wildlife, like have a huge impact on wildlife. Um, but it is, it is not the way that most people think about it. It's not the scientific avenue. And you're not working with animals on a day-to-day -day basis. But one can argue that if you work for the Wildlife Conservation Society, World Wildlife Fund, and you're a really good fundraiser, man, you can have a gigantic impact on conservation because you can hire more researchers, you can do research with a larger scope, all that jazz. You, um, there's something else I wanted to say too. Oh, if you do want to um, be involved in wildlife, if you do want to have more of a hands-on approach in wildlife, wildlife biology is actually probably not the best field for you anyway, because we observe wildlife and we do it through different ways. Um, so we do it like through, and I'm thinking of mammals a lot because I study mammals, but we do it through camera traps, through trackers, non-invasively, through DNA. And even if we do capture animals, um, our goal is to always minimize the amount of time we are capturing them, we are handling them, because our presence affects their behavior, which affects the results, which it affects the science. So we don't want to have that impact on, on our results. And it is also costly to the animals. And what I mean by costly is that it is stressful to them. It can drain them. So we don't want to be out there like with the animals all the time because we want to get the most um, complete picture of what they're doing, the most unbiased results, and we don't want to stress them out, which could affect our research project and then also obviously affect the, the health of the animals. This is something that we, we care. So if you're really interested in handling animals, you need that hands-on experience. Um, and that there are some jobs where you can have in wildlife biology where you handle animals more often, but those usually are with, um, for mammals, it's usually smaller mammals, um, or it might be like herps where you're dealing with reptiles and amphibians. Um, but if you do need to handle like mammals every day, or if you want to, if you want to like be near mammals every day, then I recommend you look into zookeeper positions. 
Um, but even zoos, they're more and more hands off nowadays. I just did an interview with a zookeeper uh, who, and th this interview I think will be out, not this week, but the week after next. And she talks about how, at her zoo, they move towards protecting contact with the elephants. So even though they're training the elephants, they're behind a barrier and they're not like physically touching the elephants. So zoos, again, they want to minimize stress too. And the reason why they have these training sessions is to train animals for medical reasons. And um, they don't always want to be capturing the animal and anesthetizing the animal. So um, they want to train it. So they if they want to like look underneath an animal's paw the animal can raise its paw and they can look at it without like i said having to like go in the enclosure and get the animal um and then the other realm that you could work in is a uh, sanctuary work um so doing like wildlife rehab working at a wildlife sanctuary those you will definitely get hands-on experience especially if you have a more medical role um, but again, with the sanctuaries, the good sanctuaries, they want to minimize that contact to just like zoos. So you will be doing things like feeding the animals and, closing, and, and cleaning the enclosures, and you will be viewing the animals. Um, there are also actually maybe studies too on animal behavior in these places. Um, so good zoos, they really care about if their animals are acting in a, um, a natural way. So there's studies that are conducted looking at things like stereotypic behavior in animals and if there is stereotypical behavior then they will um, introduce something for example enrichment to try to reduce that behavior okay we have a question would wildlife biology still include those jobs where they do controlled observers and experiments of animals yeah, absolutely. So wildlife biology does involve um, controlled experiments, so experimental manipulation. I, I think that's what you're asking. Um, but it is um, limited dependent, like behavioral science. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so with behavioral science, at least with mammals, it usually tends to be more, my husband's in the background. It used to be, it, it tends to be more observational in mammals, but in other species, it more, might be more manipulative. So for an example, in graduate school, I worked, um, uh, or there's a lab down the hall that worked with herps, so um, specifically frogs, and they would do these controlled behavioral experiments in the lab. And um, and then sometimes they did experiments in the field too. So they were interested in looking at frog calls. Um, so they would manipulate things in the lab and then do like playback calls to frogs in the wild and um, measure their responses there. Um, with mammals, you can do this, but again, it's a lot harder um, just because you usually like can't control um, what's there. You can't manipulate conditions as much. Um, so another example of frogs and amphibians was, um, I guess you could do this for mammals, but would be it would be harder to do on such a large scale, um, to manipulate different types of treatments of um, habitats, so around a pond to see um, how the, the, the different species did around these these different treatments. So like one was clear cut, one was um, a log forest, but they left the, the, the trees knocked over. And another one was natural. I think there's a fourth one, but I can't remember what it was. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna know more about jobs, oops, I have a, a list of the major job types in my book, um, Getting a Job in Wildlife Biology. So this is a really great um, overview. If you are younger in this career, I highly recommend it because you want to go into this career knowing um, all your options and, and knowing what kind of experience you need to get so you don't graduate and you're like, shoot, I'm not really qualified for that job. That's kind of what happened to me. So you don't want that to happen. Okay, so thanks guys. Um, and let me know if this time works well for you. I haven't been having many people on Facebook. Actually, there's a lot of people today. But I'm thinking about changing it to Sunday at seven Eastern Standard Time. If you would rather have that, then um, let me know. And I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week. If it's a 
it's a crappy week, turn it around. It's only Wednesday. <laughs> Bye.